Good day class. I welcome you all to my class. Being the first this semester as far as this course is concerned. The title of this course is the Nigerian Physics Curriculum at the secondary school level. For every student teacher at least teaching physics, he or she must be able to explain. Apart from explaining, you should also know what the general objectives of the physics curriculum, what they are. They are four in number. And I'm going to tell you each of them and probably offer explanation as to what each of them means. Number one objective of physics curriculum is that it, it provides basic literacy in physics for functional living in the society. Number two is that students learning physics should be able to learn basic for, so, uh, concepts and principles of physics as a preparation for further studies and what this means is that those who are willing to go further and do their master's program in physics and physics re related courses it is important for them to acquire essential concepts in physics and principles alike. The number three objective of the physics curriculum is that students are expected to acquire essential scientific skills and attitude as a preparation for the technological application of physics. This means that students, when they are taught effectively, they should be able to apply the knowledge in assisting Nigeria as a country in the area of technological development. This is very vital. But for students to be able to do this, a teacher must ensure that these students are taught actively as well as teaching these students by doing. The last of these four objectives is that the curriculum and uh, the content of the curriculum, when they are well delivered, they will stimulate and enhance, enhance the creativity of the students. <clears throat> yes, you should all know that as a science person or somebody who is learning science, your environment is filled with resources with which to teach. So the same thing as a physics teacher, if you are to teach, you are not expected to use your lesson plan only. When a teacher prepares, he does this by having his lesson plan well prepared and as well as objects or other resources that probably are concrete in nature that will facilitate effective and efficient learning to the students. So when this kind of teaching is done, students learning physics, they will be stimulated and their creativity will be enhanced. Now, there is a need for us to know about the nature of this curriculum, the, the past and the one we have now. The one we have one before this one 
this one was uh, brought out in 2009 but we had an old one before this one so there's a need for us to talk about the old one why was the old one jettisoned why do we have a new one yes the old one uh, had some challenges <coughs> some problems and this led to the review leading to the new one that we have now i think let us look at some of the problems that uh, the old one had the old one the approach used in the old one was known as the traditional approach but for the challenges and the problems that were inherent in the old one the contents were not well arranged were not in an orderly and sequential manner and when this is not done students will be confused instead of helping them in learning physics effectively and this go, goes to tell us that yes when concepts are not well arranged for students ability to learn effectively yes proper understanding of the concept by these students will not occur so this means that the contents in the old physics curriculum were not well arranged and the understanding of the concept by the students was not considered by those who prepared the curriculum. Also, as teachers, we know that prerequisite knowledge is very important for students to learn a new material because prerequisite knowledge will act as a platform upon which the new material rests. So because of these inherent problems in the old one, there was a need to have a review in order for us to have a new one. And the new one is the one we have now. So the new one, the approach used is known as the spiral or the concentric approach. And what are the features of this new one? Topics were brought together, arranged in sequential and orderly manner, and uh, the arrangement was thematic in nature, meaning that some of the topics reoccurred later in the years. And uh, this new one curriculum presented uh, what will be learned in a very more meaningful manner to the students. And uh, when the physics teacher uses this new curriculum, is able to deliver the instruction effectively, meaningfully, and for understanding meaningful understanding of the students. Because in the new curriculum, we have columns which the, the teacher looks at in teaching the students. We have the column for topic, we have the column for objectives, we have the column for the content, we have the column for the teacher's activity in the class. We also have the column for students' activities in the class. We have a column for instructional materials to be used by the teacher in the class. And putting all this together, learning will be facilitated with this arrangement used in the new curriculum. Yes. How then can we realize the objectives of the curriculum? As we have said, the new curriculum 
has given us the lead way because it has given us a new arrangement which will facilitate effective teaching and learning of physics. But to further realize the objectives of the curriculum, it is recommended in this new curriculum of 2009 that teachers, face teachers, should consider using guided discovery method when he or she is teaching his students. Yes, we know that when we use guided discovery, it's going to allow the students to uncover knowledge themselves. The teacher will only be a guide. And uh, further to this is that when the first teacher is teaching the students, he should know that there's a need <coughs> for his students to be engaged actively. So he should use activity-driven methods, student-centered method, methods that will make these students learn by doing. So all these are very important in order to teach physics effectively and meaningfully as well. This new curriculum also emphasized experimentation that all topics or all concepts that are taught in the class should, should be experimented upon in a laboratory. So it means that when teaching physics, laboratory activities are germane. Very, very important. We know that there are some teachers who do not go to the lab till probably students get to SS3. This is very, very wrong. And that is what the curriculum is telling us, that experimentation should be considered for all concepts in the physics curriculum. The teacher also, as we know, as teachers, that a good teacher will combine different methods when teaching his students. Yes. We can combine other activity-driven methods or activity-related methods with guided discovery. So when we, when we do this, we shall realize the objectives of this curriculum and the delivery of the content of physics to these students will be meaningful, will be effective, and we make these students learn physics by doing arouse the student their interest in physics as against what we have now where students are running away from learning physics this has been found to be due to the way our physics teachers teach their students they teach in a passive manner and when we teach in passive manner, surely our students will not be able to learn effectively. So there's a need for us to move from the passive way of teaching physics to the new directed ways by the physics curriculum of teaching physics. Yes, I am going to provide more explanation on this in the next class. But I will want you to go through what we've done so far and uh, when we meet in the next class, we shall discuss further and I will give you more examples relating to what we have learned today. Till then, bye-bye.